Hey everybody, so this video is a bit of a quick run through of the trigonometric ratios, the three basic trig ratios. We're not doing the three reciprocal ratios yet. So we're working only with sine, cosine, and tangent. And we just have 10 examples here that we're going to make sure that everyone can do correctly. Keep in mind, we're really we're really wearing training wheels right now. You are not doing anything major. This should be very simple. All we're doing is identifying a ratio. All we're doing is saying, okay, look, we want to use the tangent ratio and we want to find that ratio with respect to angle Z. What is that ratio? We are not doing the calculating yet. The calculating first step is where you basically are going to start with using one angle and one side to find another side of the triangle. And then eventually what we'll do is we'll use these ratios that we're finding on this sheet to work backwards and then solve for the missing angle. And once you find one acute angle, it's very easy to find the second. So before starting this worksheet, I think it's important that we, on any worksheet, on any assignment, on any math assignment, write down on top of the paper, nicely, take a few minutes, write down the critical information what is important to know for this sheet. So you can just glance up. So that really means you're going to look at your notes and narrow it down to the most important critical information. That doesn't mean other things in notes aren't important, but it's like, what is the most important thing to know right now? So first thing I'm going to write down is the mnemonic device. So, ka, toa. I've been giving this mnemonic device to students for years. It's been in existence for years. I used it when I was in high school. It's in textbooks. It is just everywhere. It's not just the trick your teacher learned. It is not just a trick, you know, one or two people know. It is, it's in the books, okay? This is a really trusted uh, mnemonic device here. So here's our mnemonic device. Now the next thing I'm going to do, once you have that written until you become an expert and even after you're an expert, is I'm going to write down really what it means. So, so, pun intended, the sine of an angle theta is OH means opposite over hypotenuse. And then I started writing an S, but I really meant to write cosine of theta. That's the next one. AH, what does that mean? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And last but not least, tan or tangent theta so ka toa opposite over adjacent now as i get my highlighters ready because i'm going to do something else just a little color coding but um the number one mistake i would say i see as a teacher grading papers is when students make a mistake in the beginning on one of the three basic trig functions, that mistake is usually on cosine for some reason. So and TOA go over a lot better. Um, cosine, I tend to see a lot of people write either the answer for sine by mistake, or they write down adjacent over opposite a lot, I also see. So really just take your time because you are going to really form habits because you're doing something new. So really take your time. Consciously be aware that you aren't an expert yet. Pay attention to your numbers. Now, what am I doing with the highlighters? <clears throat> I'm going to color coordinate the sides. Um, I'm gonna use three different colors and color code all my opposites yellow, all of my you know, hypotenuse of color, my adjacent of color, whatever. And I'm gonna be consistent on the whole worksheet because theta, will be in a different location when the triangle is drawn differently or when the question just asks you for a different angle. So it's not always the bottom left corner because you'll see as we go down this worksheet, sure, the first four are, it's almost like it's to trick you, but sometimes the triangle is drawn differently and we saw that during our lesson. So you really wanna pay attention because opposite, hypotenuse and adjacent, they're all dependent and that means they depend on something else. They depend on the drawing. They depend on the angle. So the angle may not be theta. Here we're using capital letters. And we're just going to have to be very um, aware of where we're looking at the other sides of the triangle from. Now 
Now we're on our first example here. The first question, all we're doing is finding the ratio and keep in mind, I pointed out a few things in the lesson as well. When you're finding a ratio, we really want you to definitely reduce, reduce those fractions, those ratios, and rationalize denominators. Those were the two main rules. Leave your answer as a fraction as well. Don't use decimals, okay? We like fractions and we like um, irrational numbers. So we are going to avoid decimals. And the main reason why we avoid decimals is rounding is going to basically cause you to be inaccurate. You're going to chop off some of the number and we don't want that. We want a lot of precision. So we're going to avoid decimals and we're always going to reduce. And it doesn't apply to this worksheet, but we will rationalize denominators. Oh boy, that just barely made it on the screen. Okay, let's go ahead. We want tan of angle Z. Here is angle Z. Tangent of Z. If we need to look here, it is the opposite over adjacent. For tangent, we used yellow and green. Yellow was the opposite. Which side in this picture is opposite? Right over there. We said that the opposite side will not touch the angle. It's not responsible for being a side of an angle making that angle. It is the one across from it. So there's your opposite. And then the adjacent, adjacent is next to your angle. However, it's not the hypotenuse. So the adjacent will be a leg. It's going to touch the 90 degree angle and you need to decide what way are you going to remember what the adjacent is. I tend to remember that it's not opposite, it's touching the angle and it's not the hypotenuse. That's how I do it. Um, you might do things differently, okay? Now, while I have the highlighters in my hand, maybe before we go on, we can get a little sneak peek at the next four. Cosine is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse, but I need the adjacent to the angle C. C happens to be here again, so that will be adjacent down here again. Sine does not use adjacent. My green highlighter is not needed. Tangent does. Basically, if we're dealing with just these three, each side will be excluded one time. So here green is excluded from sine. Yellow is excluded from cosine. Orange is excluded from tan or tangent. Orange, hypotenuse. Which one doesn't need the hypotenuse would be tangent. So I should color orange, the hypotenuse on anything that's not tangent. Here's cosine of C. And the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. That one doesn't change perspective. And that's why we don't use 90 degree angles for this. Because 90 degrees, if I wanted to do opposite, well, now the opposite and the hypotenuse are the same. Interesting, right? But future discussion. Sine, we do need the hypotenuse. And this is the hypotenuse no matter what. Tangent, we're not going to use. And yellow, opposite. This already has two colors, that's all I need to worry about. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. From angle C, that'll be the opposite. Tan of X, there's X, is opposite over adjacent. There's my opposite. Okay, now we'll carry on a bit. Opposite over adjacent, so that leaves me with 21 over 28. And while you're not wrong, you're not totally right. So let's do a little bit better than that. Can we reduce that? What number is a factor of both 21 and 28? Well, 21 is three times seven. There's my <clears throat> prime factorization. And this one is really four times seven, not quite prime, because that could be two times two. So we are going to reduce. I don't wanna say cancel, cancel. We reserve that word for addition and subtraction. We're reducing or we're simplifying. So we're reducing and we'll get three fourths. While that does equal 0.75 or 0 0.75, um, just leave it as 3 fourths, okay? Final answer, tan Z equals 3 fourths. Next up, another thing I like to do on my <clears throat> worksheets is 
kind of bubble off or block off one problem from another. Circle answers uh, makes your life easier when you're looking it over later, okay? Cosine of C is adjacent over hypotenuse. A over H. Whenever I abbreviate down to just one letter, um, I use capital letters because if you're messy, a lowercase a and a lowercase o will sort of start to look alike and we don't want any mess ups there. Okay, angle C is down there, adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine C equals 16 over 34. Whenever I reduce things where I'm not quite sure, is there a bigger number that I could simplify? I just chip away. So they're both even. Half of each number then, 8, half of 34. Be careful with this one. Um, it's 17. I see a lot of weirdness happen when people cut 34 in half. Uh, 17's prime, so there's nothing else we can do, so we're done. No need for a decimal. Finished. Sine of C. Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is going to be in relation to angle C, which is in the bottom left again, 28 over hypotenuse, 35. What's the common factor? What is the greatest common factor between 28 and 35? That would be 7. So if I can reduce out a 7 from each of these, 7, 7, adios, we get 4 fifths. Lovely. Next, tan of x. x is in the bottom left again. Very deceiving. This isn't always going to happen. Opposite over adjacent. Toa. Tan x. Opposite is 32 over adjacent 24. What's the greatest common factor? What is the greatest common factor of 32 and 24? 8. So if I can remove an 8, a factor of 8, from both 32 and 24, I'll be left with a 4 and a 3. This is another reason why it's really important to know your time tables really, 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 really well. Um, is there anything else I should address right now? Maybe not. Um, I guess a little, while I separate here, a little side information. Um, sine and cosine. Since the hypotenuse is always going to be in the denominator for sine and cosine, and since the hypotenuse is definitely the biggest side of a right triangle, that means, well, maybe you can tell me, what does that mean? Sine and cosine, the hypotenuse is found in the denominator. The hypotenuse is always the biggest side in a right triangle. So what can we say about the ratios for sine and for cosine? Sine and cosine ratios will always be less than one. There'll always be some number that is less than one. Um, and these ratios for tangent, opposite over adjacent, there's not really any rule on uh, who could be bigger, the opposite, the adjacent, like it's, it's a toss up. So we might have answers less than one and you might have answers greater than one. So good tidbit right there. Let's look at the next, uh, let's look at the next four examples. This next example is cosine of angle A. Here we have angle A, actually I'm gonna switch to a brighter, pen now that I'm not going to color. So angle A is right over here. Cosine is the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. Don't mix up that obviously A here is talking about the angle and A here is just talking about adjacent. That's just my shorthand. Cosine of angle A equals. So which side is adjacent to angle A? If you said 30, you are a big winner. Next, over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the one across from the 90 degrees, no matter what, 34. I'm going to reduce in the next step, and since they're both even, I'm gonna do a little chipping away. Let's chip away and reduce each number by two. Find half of each. That would be 15, and that is 17. And that's all we can do, and that's it, we're done. It's important to keep in mind that these numbers, since there's no radicals and they're labeled on right triangle, they aren't just random numbers. These are Pythagorean triples. So you could even make a list for yourself of a few more Pythagorean triples or just take a minute to note them. If I cut each of these in half, that'll be eight, that will be 15, 
and that will be 17. So 8, 15, 17 is a Pythagorean triple. Good to know. Next example, sine of angle A. This time, angle A is over here. So we did see a difference. This triangle is flipped over, um, drawn a little bit differently, where the right angle is on the top, where the first four, the right angle is on the bottom. And here we have the right angle on top again, but the angle, our point of reference, is down here on the bottom right. So we're going to do sine, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Which side is the opposite side from angle A? The opposite side would be 32. And the hypotenuse, again, across from that 90, is 40. What number will reduce this fraction? The greatest common factor between these two numbers is 8. So if we reduce 8 from each of these numbers, we will get 4 over 5. 4 and 5 in a right triangle with all these numbers, hmm, I wonder what Pythagorean triple this is. It must be the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Sneaky guy. Okay, next. Sine of z. z is up here. So we're looking from this perspective, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The side that's opposite angle z is 24. The side that is opposite, uh, I'm sorry, this hypotenuse, across from that 90, there's the 40. That means, writing a full thought for my final answer, sine of z equals, we're going to reduce this fraction with the number 8. 3 over 5. Final answer, sine z is the ratio 3 over 5. Next up, sine of angle C. So we have sine again three times in a row, and sine of C will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite is 14, hypotenuse is 50, both even, let's chip away. Sine C is seven over 25. Here we have some new numbers for our Pythagorean triple. What numbers do we have? If I divide each in half, I have 7, 24, 25. So there we have another Pythagorean triple. I'm going to circle my Pythagorean triples in blue. Oh, that was the pen I wanted to throw away. All right, beautiful. Okay, we have two more at the bottom of this page. So the last two we're doing in this video are cosine of z and tan of c. So we are going to address that this is cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Which side is adjacent to angle z? 24. And the hypotenuse is? What number will I reduce my numerator and denominator with or by? That would be 6. So if I reduce 6 from each, that's really a 4 times 6, and that is really 5 times 6. 6 over 6 is 1. Final answer Again, keep in mind, I did mention in the beginning, cosine and sine, your answer will always be less than one. So you definitely know you're making a mistake. This is good advice. You'll definitely know you're making a mistake if you ever get an answer for sine or for cosine that is bigger than one, like five fourths. Whenever your numerator and denominator are equal, that's one. So a number over itself, well, that's one. If this number is less than the other number, well, now we're less than one. So 3 over 4, 2 over 4, 1 over 4, whatever. And as this number gets bigger than the bottom number, we're bigger or greater than 1. So these will always be less than 1. Quick little um, advice on recognizing if you made a mistake or not. Okay, last problem. We have 27, 36, and 45. Um, something that you can do when you know you're working with trig and ratios, it's going to reduce anyway. If you look at the numbers, say you're doing a bunch of ratios, you could 
really um, simplify this ratio right now. What is this triple? What Pythagorean triple do we have here? What's the common ratio or the um, common factor, the scale factor that's boosting up this triangle? They're all nine times something. What is this? Three times nine. This is four times nine. And this is five times nine. So if you think about it, any ratio of any two sides, sine, cosine, or tangent, nine will reduce. So we're going to be left with threes, fours, and fives. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so we are doing tan of C. I'm even going to rewrite the problem. Tan C equals opposite. Let's write the full word for our last example. Over adjacent. And where's C? Right up here. So the opposite side is 3 times 9. I'm going to write both numbers right now just to show you how it works. And the adjacent side is the leg that's touching the angle. It's not the hypotenuse. 4 times 9. These big old 9s reduce. Final answer, a nice 3 fourths. Writing it out as a full thought, tan of angle C is 3 fourths. Um, hopefully you also remember advice from the lesson, try to avoid at all costs using those slanted fraction bars, okay? They will be your worst enemy in the future and it would just be better for everyone if we avoided. And that's the end. I hope that this was helpful. I hope you realize, um, you know, if you had made any mistakes doing this on your own, what those mistakes were and you have a few new tricks or thoughts that you'll keep in mind so that you don't make those mistakes again.